Welcome back to Redirecting. In a moment here, I'm going to be playing a clip for you from a Birmingham pastor who delivered a powerful speech at a city council meeting. At a city council meeting. This speech was so powerful and there was no shame in his game. As a matter of fact, he dropped the mic when he was finished. Not literally, but you know what I mean. He laid down that truth and didn't care who didn't like it. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this clip and I will be right back uh, Fifth Avenue North on yesterday we had a historical thing to happen in the city of Birmingham they call it historical you know made history and all that kind of stuff but I'm here this morning to talk about another history history to me yesterday was one of the most bizarre scenes I ever seen in this city one of the most comedic scenes I ever witnessed in public when I witnessed men with size 13, 14 shoes out there kissing each other in the mouth in front of little kids, it was just bizarre. It was like a freak scene going on. That's what I call it. Now, I know about the government and laws being made, but I got a law this morning that came out of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 31. And it says, shall a man leave his mother and father and join to his wife, and they shall become one. And to have your kids out there yesterday, six, seven years old, holding flags, the Bible said, provoke not your children. Tariah, Tariah, Proverbs 22 and verse 6, seven. train up a child in the right way he should go. And when he get old, he wouldn't depart. I'm so delighted and honored that God would have me bold enough to stand here and talk about this issue. Well, all the preachers was yesterday. You know what I mean? The only time going to make them come out of them doors when they stop them tithing off in your church. And you can't have men's day no more. And youth day and women's day. I bet you're going to have a sign in your hand with Brother Ed then. You're going to be standing in front of the White House then. No, y'all got to leave us alone. You know what I mean? But somebody should have stood up yesterday. Ain't it funny? Everybody got a right but the Christian. So I'm here this morning to talk about my right. Because I got a right too. I can barely say praise the Lord in public now. I might go to jail. I might threaten a lawsuit on the job. You can't have a, tell a person to have a blessed day. Ain't it sad? Y'all, I got a text this morning going to share, which I'm getting on out here. I got a text all the way from Washington, D.C. And I'm going to break the news to y'all. And y'all in the back of me also. In two more years, in 2016, February the 9th, you won't only be able to marry your partner that you play football with no more. You're going to be able to marry your dog. You're going to be able to marry your cat. You're going to be able to marry your snake. You're going to be able to marry your rat. Your roaches. Some of y'all been with the roaches so long, you might well go and marry the roaches. <laughs> He been around your house so long, you gonna be able to marry your broom, your mop. Ain't we going crazy in this world, y'all? Ain't we going crazy? I know Alabama made a lot of money. Y'all say I know somebody else made a lot of money too. Duracell ain't got no batteries on the shelf this morning. All the batteries gone. I tried to find a battery for my radio this morning. Couldn't find them nowhere. I said, what happened? They said, Rev, they bought all the batteries last night. They celebrated some kind of way. Just bought all the batteries. I don't know what they do with the batteries. No, every day. I'm going to preach. I don't go there. You know what I mean? I don't know what they did with all them batteries. Now, Mr. Mayor, don't stop me in the hallway, you and your security team, and tell me I can't come here talking like I talk because you got a political job to do. I got a biblical job to do. And I'm going to do mine and you do yours. I'm going to stay in my lane and you stay in yours. I ain't bought by nobody. If I had to die doing what I'm going to do, I'm just fine. Y'all remember Peter and si uh, Paul and Silas were thrown in jail. I'm getting out of here, Mr. Off. Don't you push that button. Time you remember Paul and Silas <laughs> were thrown in jail? You remember the three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace? You remember Daniel was thrown in the last den? They just said when he show up or if he show up, they said we know he going to show up. Why are we scared today, preachers? Your time. Everybody right. coming out of the closet but the saints. When we going to come out of the closet? And all the gay people ain't show up down there. Y'all say, we got some down low people that show up. Some of them down here. A lot of you will say, well, as you speak out against um, interracial marriage and things of that nature, well, when I speak on things, it's not my personal opinion. It's in scripture. Because at one time, I didn't believe there was anything necessarily wrong with interracial marriage. That's when I was in Christianity. I just felt like it wasn't for me. 
but I didn't feel like it was wrong, but I didn't have a basis for it. I didn't understand scripture because in the Christian church, nobody talked about it. But when I got in the word for myself and I've seen so many others speak on this issue and I've seen scripture to back this up, then I am fully of the belief that we are not to do it. And so I don't like to deal with personal opinions. If you can't show it to me in the word, then it's like, hey, why are we even talking about it? But when you show it to me in the word, in context, because you have people who will take things out of context, literally, they will take one passage, such as Paul's letters and say, let the women keep silent. It's not permitted for them to speak. So uh, what about the scriptures where women were speaking, where the Most High was using them? And you have brothers who say that the Most High don't deal with the daughters of Zion. But then you have all of these other scriptures. First of all, they don't even have a scripture to support that. But you have all of these scriptures where the Most High says that he have spoken to the daughters of Zion. And he have told them, he's given them instructions on things to do. And so taking things out of context is one thing, but completely lying on the Most High is another thing, okay? There are so many different things. Like, uh, I hate to say it, but some people, they use the scripture to justify wrongdoing. And let me tell you what I mean by that. There is a large group of people who will use the scripture where uh, Jonathan and David were close. He said, I loved him um, he, when he talked about his love for David or Jonathan, um, a lot of people will use that to try to say that is an endorsement of homosexuality. Now, that's a person using the word of Yah deceitfully. That is a person who is just trying to justify something so incredibly wicked that it is mind-boggling that they can get that understanding from a passage where somebody is talking about how he loves someone. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a no-go right there, especially when Scripture clearly tells you that mankind should not lay with mankind as you do with womankind. Okay? But people will stir up these doctors and get it all up in their heads, and they will justify it to their own demise. The Most High is not mocked whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. I like how this Christian pastor just just blew this thing out of the water. He told them to stay in his own, their own lane, and he'll stay in his. He said, you do your political stuff. And I will do my biblical stuff, you see. And so a lot of people, they are standing up for the truth regardless of what it is. Of course, a lot of people are readily able and willing to come against something such as this. Okay. But when it comes to other things, they're silent on. We have to be willing to stand for the truth no matter what. No matter what. And I know that there are a lot of different things out there that people are doing that... Um, you're not really sure about, but at the end of the day, we have to not live just by our own convictions, but by the truth, because some people say that they are not convicted of certain things. They feel like there is no problem with doing certain things, but living by your own convictions, you might think it's okay to do ABC, but XYZ, you might be against. We can't do it like that. According to Yah's word, that is how we live. You see, that is what we go by. And you have to get understanding with all of this, too, because a lot of people misunderstand scripture. A good good idea or a good um, example of that, should I say, is when the scripture talks, in about, talks about forgiving and loving. Um, when you look deeply into those passages, it was talking about among our brethren. But you see, you have people who can't even achieve that, can't even love and forgive their own people. But our enemies, those who can't stand us we have all types of love and forgiveness for them the scripture did not command or tell the Israelites that they were commanded to love the Amalekites the Philistines the Canaanites the Edomites and all these people that came against us we were not commanded to love those enemies it was talking about the enemies of our own people see we can do that very easily we can say okay you know what I can't stand him. And you just leave it at that. Some of you take your hatred to the grave as it relates to your own people. But with these other nations, boy, you open up that heart of forgiveness so fast your head spins. That's the kind of people that we have become. Where we can stand up for what is right in some cases, but for others we cannot. And so we must repent of that. But this Christian pastor, I want to bring it back around to him. 
and close this thing on out. He stood up in front of notable men in his community. Didn't care if they agreed with him or not. All types of people were in that audience. He wasn't talking to his congregation filled with black faces. He was talking to all of the people involved in that city. City officials, officers, all kinds of people were at that meeting. But yet this man delivered such a powerful message and didn't care what anybody had to say about it. That's what I'm talking about. He would be a very powerful man in the truth. If he understood who we are as a people and he talked like that, he would be a very powerful man in the truth if he dropped it down like that. That is what we need. More people who will drop down the truth and don't care what nobody have to say. Okay, family, I'm out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also, comment, share, like, and subscribe.